This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by Nissan. Nissan SUVs have the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Hey, Pashi. Hey, Suvi. I have a question for you. Sure. It's sort of, I guess, based on the questions we ask at the end of every podcast, because I feel like... I would say my favorite way to travel is train. Yeah. But now I have a chance to put it to the test. I'm doing a show in Ottawa, Canada. Okay. The next day I'm doing a show in Toronto, Canada. Now, it's a very short flight, say, I think an hour, hour, 20 minutes. Yeah. Or it's a four-hour train ride, maybe four and a half. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you do if you're me? You take the train. Okay, I think it's the train. You put it to the test. Because also you got to get to that plane an hour before. Yeah, that's that extra hour, right? Security. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming you're not going to check luggage. But no. I think if you get a nice seat against a window. Right. See Canada go by the windows. Yeah. From everything I know, Canada's pretty pretty. Yeah. All right. So it seems like we've decided. Yeah. Train it's going to be. Great. Love it. Yeah. Uh, mom and dad are going to take a trip in about a month. They're going to Amsterdam. They're going to take this sort of like, I think a boat that goes from Antwerp to a bunch of Belgian and Dutch towns. And they're flying into Amsterdam, but the trip officially starts in Antwerp. And mom is very concerned about arranging that train and how they're going to go from Amsterdam to Antwerp. And I looked it up yesterday and there are several options. I would imagine a thousand options. Yeah. And she really wants to know what time of day they leave, when they get mm-hmm. in. Gotcha. Again, this is a month away. Right. And she doesn't even know when they need to be in Antwerp, um, but she's uh, she's pretty spun out about it. I would be spun out if this was true. They were taking a boat trip through Europe and dad was captaining the boat. <laughs> if it was a little... <laughs> Just a little two-seater. Yeah, that'd be... Throwing their luggage in. That would be bad. Yeah. You did a thing that I feel like daughters and sons all over this great nation do when they go back to their house they grew up in. Oh, sure. You fix something on the television. Yeah. I I try to sort of look at all the tech and try to try to right the ship. You want them to live their best lives. I do. Like for mom, I have her Spotify login details and I will log in as her from Los Angeles and I will make mixes, and then I log out, and I log back into my own. But then when she logs in, and she's never logged out, so these mixes will just magically appear for her. When I got here this time, she was like, "Those mix- I can't find those mixes. And I opened up Spotify, and I clicked on library, and then, then they were all there. Yeah. And it's funny because she knows what a library is and knows that's where you go to find stuff. <laughs> she's wor- she's like volunteered at the library. Yeah. At the local library. By the way, and again, for our listeners, this is why I don't even make an effort. <laughs> she's got one son who's going into her Spotify, making, curating lists for her, and then yeah. going to find the list when she can't. I think I got her a Bruce Springsteen best of CD back in 98. That might have been the last yeah. My, my last effort. I will say, Dad and I went to go pick up food last night and we came back in. She was playing one of these mixes and she was dancing in the kitchen and then she and Dad danced. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he's still, is he still in the hospital? Is he out? <laughs> no, but he did dip her. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a good dip. It was uh, Bette Midler's Do You Want to Dance that they were dancing. Oh, to. that's good. Hot track. A track they've been dancing to our entire lives. I do have a true story about, I've told this story before about mom and Bruce Springsteen, which is, Steelers went to a Super Bowl. Can't remember Mm -hmm. if it was 08 or 2010 season, but I got us tickets. And this is so exciting because one, the Steelers make the Super Bowl. That's the most exciting thing. Then we got tickets. Anyway, I had this conversation with mom once. I said, I got us tickets to the Super Bowl. She was like, oh my God. And I said, and guess who's playing the halftime show? And she said, who? And I said, Bruce Springsteen. And mom said, oh. Are we going to meet Bruce Springsteen? (laughs) I said, no. (laughs) How did you take this incredible thing and immediately find a a level above it that was possible? Yeah, we're going to go down (laughs) after the halftime show and say hey to Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. So my Spotify correction was one thing, but then... A success. A success. Everybody appreciated it. I think so. Then last night we watched a show. We watched a new show on BritBox. And uh, it looked terrible. 
Yeah. And I know that the British, they make great television and it doesn't look terrible. So I pulled up the settings this morning because the old auto motion plus or motion yeah. smoothing was on. It's a real issue for uh, cinephiles. A lot of people who make television or make movies will tell you, you got to turn it off because it makes our work look janky. Yeah. I mean, Tom Cruise That's right. made a, a video with the director of The Last Mission Impossible. And it was like- a, Macquarie, right? That guy? Yeah. Like a public service to be like, hey, you should not be watching things with this on. And shame on the television manufacturers who put yeah. this dumb setting in. So I fixed it. And then dad was like, show me the difference. And he was like, yeah, I like it. I like it on. He likes Auto Motion Plus. And it's going to be very hard for me to leave here with it on because yeah. the t- it, just, it, looks, it looks so bad. Everything looks like a soap opera. Now, do you think you could actually gaslight him and switch it back? And do you think he would notice the difference if you left? If he thought it was on, do you think he would notice it was off? He might. And like yeah. my problem this morning is I, you know, I did it in the morning. And so it's morning television that's on. And so I just wanted to like put it on a movie and the end of uh, Ordinary People was on. And I just put that on as a thing to watch the last 20 minutes of. And I showed it to him on that. And it's very clear to me. He's like, I don't really see the difference, but this is an old movie. So put it on something else. And I was just like, what's on? And the Steve Carell Get Smart from 2008 was on. So I put that on, but that's a bad test of something. Because it's, you know, it's not, it's not like it's from this year. And I don't know their channel listings. I would have liked to pull up like a law and order. I feel like a law and order would be a very clear thing. But I'm just, I'm running out of time here. And I don't know if I can yeah. try to pitch it again. Here's how I would have dealt with it. I don't care. And I would have left it as is. <laughs> I do, though, like when something's a little bit off, Dad. I mean, do you remember how Dad has, I feel like he's constantly got his own telltale heart somewhere in the house. Like, mm. um, do you remember there was like a whole year where he he heard a rattle in his car? Oh, yeah. And his uh, he had wire wheel hubcaps on his Lincoln Town car. Yeah. And, and he kept was- saying, there's a rattle. And he would just come in all the time. He would make you go out in the car with him and drive around and see if you heard the rattle. Yeah. It's amazing we still have him with us. I would have thought. <laughs> I was like, no, I think that rattles in your head and maybe this is, maybe we should say our goodbyes. And that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> I will say he did last night on the couch. He's like, I went to uh, REI and I was like, oh, because he before called yeah. it Recreational Equipment yeah. Incorporated. And I was like, well, it you're still, you're overpronouncing it. He's like, well, I did it for your benefit. But so, I don't know, maybe maybe he'll hear this and be like, all right, I got to give this another go. Maybe. Or maybe yeah. he'll just dig his heel in. <laughs> Daddy style. <laughs> yeah, TVD. <laughs> he likes what he likes. He likes what he likes, that's for sure. And I, who am I to take that away from him? Exactly. Somebody we both, uh, we both like. We've yeah. known her for years. Met her in Amsterdam when we were working at the Improv Comedy Theater Boom Chicago. Amber Ruffin. She... Did two different stints in Amsterdam. She also worked at Second City in Chicago. And then when I put together the staff for Late Night, my very first staff, she was one of our first hires. She is a delight. Uh, The Amber Ruffin Show was a fantastic show of hers. Her sister Lacey and her have a great podcast, The Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber Show. They've co-written a couple of books. Pretty prolific. We love talking to her. She's prolific. Does a bunch of stuff on Broadway. She wrote the book for The Wiz on Broadway. Performances for that begin March 29th at the Marquee Theater. She does a lot. Her name is Amber Ruffin, and you're going to hear our conversation with her right after this song from Jeff Tweedy. Hey, sorry. Yeah. I know, uh, Pashi, I know um, I said right after the Jeff Tweedy song, we were going to get to Amber Ruffin. But um, while we were listening to the Jeff Tweedy song, I got a text from dad. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And again, you're recording this at home and you're right down the hallway from his bedroom. I am. Anyway, the text said, don't listen to Pashi's bullshit about my TV. (laughs) Is that for real? (laughs) That's for real. 
So, I mean, it's very rare we get breaking news during the recording of the podcast, but I felt like yeah. I should interrupt this broadcast with breaking news. This is a report from Dad's bedroom. <laughs> Don't listen. This is a live text. Don't listen to Poshy's bullshit about my TV. I'm almost afraid to shut down my system here and leave my bedroom now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now everybody can hear our conversation with Amber. Hey. 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 What's up, sunshine? Hi, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Where you been? L.A.? I've been around. Oh. I've been around. Oh. Yeah. Amber, Hi. the three of us, you know, we work together, you and I. That's why I haven't flipped out when I saw you. I don't <laughs> want our listeners to be wondering why Josh was so excited to see you. But we all met in Amsterdam. Yeah, so yeah. here's my question for you. To start this right off, Josh and I never did passport travel with our parents when we were little. First time I got a passport was to move to Amsterdam. Josh? I think uh, it wasn't to move to Amsterdam. I had gone uh, to visit a girlfriend in London. You gone to visit me too as well. Yeah. So what about you, Amber? Did you guys ever go on a trip overseas? No. My first passport was also to do boom. Wow. Yeah. We also were just talking to Pat and Oswald. Her dad was a Marine, but he was referred to as an army brat. Your parents were Air Force. That's true. Do you consider yourself an army brat? No way. They were way out of the Air Force by the time I came around. By okay, the time gotcha. everybody came around. I okay, feel like good. they moved to Omaha and were like, you know what? This is as good a place as any. And then plopped down and had some children. And a lot of children, right? Five. Yeah. I'm the youngest of five. Youngest of five. That's why I'm so freaking bad. <laughs> don't give a rip. <laughs> Josh, are you bad? I don't think I'm bad. You don't seem bad. Yeah, no. I think I'm pretty good. good I don't kid. think youngest of two is necessarily bad. I think no. when you get youngest to four or five, that's when you just become, no offense, Amber, a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really hey. think you were bad? Like, in what ways were you bad? I was bad in that I knew for a fact that the rules did not apply to me because I'm the baby. Yeah. Also, I... You know, ran around with a lot of like, give it to the baby. Let the baby eat it. Watch the baby do her dance. Let the baby have it. Like a lot. That's how I grew up. And it's a lot like being at late night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny with our kids now because our baby is finally turning into a person. And the boys, I think, are realizing how the rest of their life is going to lay out. Because they thought she was a cute baby, too. And now they're realizing, oh, mom and dad are going to think she's a baby forever. Yeah. Like to them, she's, oh, kid rules, right? And we're just, no, okay. she's always going to be the baby. She has diplomatic immunity yep. for all things. Don't trip her. Don't pinch her. You better say she's doing a good job. All of it. It's great. How many sisters? How many brothers? I have three older sisters and one older brother. Gotcha. And what's the gap from oldest to you? Crystal is 10 years older than me. Well, I guess that makes sense with five, 10 years older. So yeah. did you ever have a... A seven-person trip, two parents and five five roughing kids? We had one seven-person trip. In your life? In our lives. I mean, you, you would too. <laughs> 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 well, we had a lot of fun, but we weren't like the travelingest mugs. It's a lot of kids. It's a lot of mess. We don't want to be doing it. Yeah. yeah, They don't want to be dragging us around. So then later, they would be like, okay, who feels like coming? And then we had a couple of smaller trips. And the baby, did the baby always feel like going on those trips? Yeah. <laughs> who were they going to give all their attention to <laughs> yeah, exactly. if I didn't go? Yeah. It would seem that your older siblings, like once you go teenager, you might be like, I got my friends here. I want to hang out here. Right. The older siblings felt that way. Yeah. But me? No, man. Yeah. I got to be talking to mom and dad. I want to know what they're doing. (laughs) (laughs) What was the seven person trip? Do you remember? The seven person trip was the trip. It's why we don't go on trips anymore. (laughs) We all piled into our giant conversion van. How old were you? I'm five. Okay, gotcha. So you got a 15-year-old down to a five-year-old in a conversion van. That's right. And we drive to, from Omaha to Ohio to see Uh Mount Rose. 
to Maryland to see cousin Derek down to Virginia and Georgia where mom and dad are from. Then I think we did a stop at Disneyland or world, whoever's in Florida. Then we went to El Paso and then we came back home. It was the entire summer and it was so much fun. I mean, I had a blast. It sounds like several locations that you'd like punch into MapQuest and be like, Does, is this possible? Like, what's the best <laughs> way to do this? But it's that real circuitous travel across America. Yeah, just a giant circle. It was the only trip I ever needed. <laughs> I was like, I get it. Great. This is where grandma lives. Great. I love it. So parents in the front seat, do you feel like you sat in the same place in that conversion van for most of the trip or... No, we had to take turns keeping dad awake. So then (laughs) I was really eager to do that. So lots of times I sat in the front and would pinch dad and talk to him and sing him songs to Uh keep him awake. (laughs) Gun to his head at the end of the trip. Who do you think your dad would say was his favorite kid to have next to him? Lacey. Oh, interesting. Lacey's the favorite. (laughs) Okay. Oh, so you're the baby. Lacey's the favorite. That's right. And is Lacey the next one older than you? Jimmy, the brother, is between me and Lacey. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. You and Lacey have a wonderful podcast, I should note. You have written a book together. You are a wonderful company. Has Lacey earned her right to be the favorite? Yes, because Lacey was a very big nerd. Lacey and I were very big nerds. Mm -hmm. But Lacey also, like, had natural fear, Whereas I didn't really have a lot of that. And like she worried about whether she was being a good girl or not. And I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you had no time for that. I, I can't do it. Yeah. I would guess a nine-year-old riding shotgun might be, though, the sweet spot, too. Like, five is a little too young, and by 11 or 13, they're a little over it. They don't really want to be in the front seat with their dad, so. Yeah, Lacey's going to be in the front seat. She's really going to do a good job. She's focused on efficiency. I'm going to be in the front seat. I'm going to realize different rules apply up here, and I can bite you, and I'm going to bite him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was that's the difference. Was there one listening system on the course of the drive? Were you all listening to the radio or was there something else or did everybody have their own headphones? It was always the radio, but that's this trip. OK, so then there was one trip that was just me, mom, dad, our three nieces and nephews and my sister. On that trip, we all got in the car, got so far, got to like Des Moines. And then realized no one had brought a CD. So we tore up the van, we tore it up, and then we found one CD. It was the single of, why did I start this without knowing it? Oh, it was Where My Girl's At, from the front to back. (laughs) And we played it. And everyone was like, oh, what a nice song. Play it one more time. We played it again. We were like, dang, this song is hit. We played it. We played this song a million times, and my dad knows every ooh and ah to where my girl's at. It was just so happened that everyone in the van was like, this is the best song I ever heard. So this was instead of listening to the radio, you decided to listen to the same track over and over again? That's right. So this ride, it sounds like, (laughs) yeah, maybe a lot more females in the car than males. Was your dad, did your dad, and again, that's, he had five daughters. I have four daughters, one son. Did he like, did he kind of give it over to the girls when they wanted to do anything, wanted to listen to something? In order to get in trouble by dad, you have to have lit something on fire. And that's literal. (laughs) And I only know because I did it. That is the only way on earth you could get this man to pout in even the slightest way. You can't, there's nothing you can't do. It's fine. Every year at the 4th of July, We would go to mom and dad's house. Everyone would come over. We would play. This is every year since time began. Volleyball. Boys versus girls. Always boys versus girls. And the girls cheat (laughs) terribly. And dad is on the boys team. And dad goes, well, you know, let let her do it over. And then we win because we cheated. Right. How does your brother take that? He's the same. He knows. He knows the score. (laughs) We'll fight him right now. (laughs) do they come at it from a place of they love you and celebrate you or do they come at it from a place of we are defeated and we don't have any fight left in us they're certainly defeated they're defeated (laughs) (laughs) 
And would your mother, is your mother easier to make angry then? It sounds like your father's pretty unflappable. Yeah, you could you could get under mom's skin, but you wouldn't. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. She's in the back seat with, you know, with the rest of you, with four of you. Is there keeping the peace that has to be done back there? Or what's uh what's her vibe on these on this drive? There is no keeping the peace. I'm not fighting nobody. I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm being good. Now, if it was just dad, all right, then we're gonna act bad. But mom's in there, we are keeping it tight. We are saying please and thank you. We are coloring in our coloring books because mom's not going to have it. Did your parents meet while they were both in the Air Force? Yes. That's so nice. They met in the Air Force. Isn't that cute? That is cute. And did any of their children choose a military path? Yes. My brother is (laughs) the sometimes core. The National Guard? The Reserves? Oh, the Reserves. There we go. Okay, gotcha. We found it. The sometimes core... (laughs) <laughs> I feel like that is a way clearer. You might get more people to sign up if it was just called the Sometimes Core. It should be. They'd catch me sometimes. Ooh. <laughs> what about when you were just, uh, if it's not a summer where you're going to visit every family member you have across America, what is a summer in Omaha? What do families do? What did the Ruffins do? Fourth of July is the big deal. Okay. That's the fun. Everyone comes over. It's a lot of food. We're all having a blast. And this had been going since, you know, since I can remember. And then we just kind of stopped doing it because my parents moved. But this was my entire life, that 4th of July party. And now I have a 4th of July party sometimes. But uh, we did start a fire here. In New York, you're, you're, you started a fire there? Yeah. How, mm-hmm. Whose fault? I know a lot of our writers were there. Were any of them to blame? It might have been a sparkler dropped by one of us. Okay. But we ran down there with a fire extinguisher and we extinguished it. Oh, you really? You did, It wasn't even a water situation. You had to. There was also a bucket of water. Water didn't get there in time. But yeah. the what's the name did it. Couldn't tell you what we started talking about to get me to fire extinguisher. Just summers in Omaha and fires and 4th of July. Yay! How yeah. many nieces and nephews do you have now, Amber? 13. Wow. Wow. And how, what is, how old is the oldest of those? If I'm... You don't have to say. 45, then Zachary is 34. Gotcha. So my oldest nephew is 34. He's a man. And he yeah. used to be my little baby, and he looks all old. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but then the youngest is Ava is eight, and that is a statement that I think is true. Now, when you said if I'm 45, I want to do it a different way for you, especially yeah. seeing you as you. If you're 45, I want you to write down your skincare routine. <laughs> <laughs> because... You look as young as the day I met you. I hope so. I I can see it. But hey, you know what? Seth, we can all look like this, baby. Go to stop video. Hit that up carrot. Go to video settings. (laughs) Did you up carrot yourself? (laughs) Touch up my appearance. Did you do it? No, I didn't. Okay, good. Because I feel like when I touch up my appearance, my eyebrows disappear. Mm -hmm. Small price to pay. Yeah. I mean, if you're 45, Seth is 72. 72. (laughs) Uh, Not a day over 72. I'm going to date when we're recording this, and I'm going to tell Amber's a writer on the show, but she will not have seen this because she doesn't watch the show, correct? I've never seen it. It's not not for me. Josh Brolin was on the show last night and took his shirt off because he brought out these two charity t-shirts he was selling. And he took a shirt, and I was this close, Amber. I didn't do it. (laughs) I just remembered. However good I'm feeling about whatever physical shape I'm in right now, it don't look good under those bright <laughs> Studio 8G lights. It was not. So I, but God bless Josh Brolin who just he just ripped it off. His shirt. That guy's looking pretty good for his age. Took his shirt off. Oh, People went crazy. Louise. They lost their minds. Oh, it is really funny how even in an age where literally anything you want to see about a person's physical body is like a you know button away on the internet, right? Like the amount of nudity that's available to us. And yet a dude takes his shirt off. People are like, (laughs) what? Like literally. (laughs) I didn't have to go to Google. (laughs) Um, So when you drive and on this big road trip, your Aunt Rose is first stop in Ohio. 
That's right. And then how long are you spending with Aunt Rose? Does she join you for any of this trip? She absolutely doesn't join us. I do not remember her. I could not pick her out of a lineup. <laughs> I feel like she she's in no way related to us. She's mommy's one of mommy's best friends. Mm-hmm. And Crystal, my oldest sister, her middle name is Rose. We're all named after our godmothers. That's not true. Crystal and I are named after our godmothers. And that's why my middle name is Mildred. That's Mm -hmm. all the information I have on Aunt Rose. Okay. Do you remember when you rolled into Aunt Rose's town or home, whether the seven of you stayed with them or stayed at a hotel? Any memory? I am certain we stayed with everybody. Wow. Because, you know, it was back then and that was more normal but also we want to be in there mixing it up yeah because then otherwise mom and dad would have to drop us off and then go out with everyone you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's less convenient i remember that we (laughs) stayed with everyone because (laughs) one of my very like i guess not first memories but worst maybe i was four instead of five whatever i'm taking a bath with jimmy And this is one of my first memories. And we're at Uncle Palmer's house in El Paso. And we're just in the bathtub. Jimmy sneezes. And the amount of snot that came out of his nose made like a big, like, bubble in the water between us. And I started screaming bloody murder. And dad runs in, burst out the door. And he's like, you know, he's unflappable, this man. And his face just went like, ew. But he didn't say (laughs) ew because that's not something he would say. And he just gently picked me up out of the water and just (laughs) cleaned Jimmy up. He had to scoop the snot out of the water. It was the (laughs) freaking grossest thing I ever saw in my life. And that's why I know we stayed at people's houses because I remember that. And I was like, hmm, I think we're at the end of baths with Jimmy. (laughs) When back in Omaha, did you have to share a room or did baby Amber have her own room? I shared a room with Lacey. Oh, wow. Me and Lacey shared a room. Jimmy had his own room. And Crystal and Angie were downstairs in the basement doing God knows what. Oh, yeah. That's the dream. That's where the, that's where the good stuff happens. Because you can get out that window. Mm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you and Lacey get along uh, well now. Were you good roommates growing up? Absolutely. Yeah. And Lacey would treat me like her little doll baby. Mm-hmm. Um, like if I was feeling sad or if I had hurt myself in any way, Lacey would be like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> like once I hurt my thumb and she was like, oh, gosh, what are we going to do? And then she took me and was like, mom. Lacey or Amber's going to bed early. And mom was like, all right. So she laid me down and then got out James and the Giant Peach and read me James and the Giant Peach all week to nurse my thumb back to health at bedtime. Yeah. So that's Lacey. It's really her fault that I'm terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we're going to take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. Family Trips is supported by Airbnb. Hey, Pashi. Yeah, Sufi. Sometimes friends of mine will ask to stay with me. And of course, I'm happy to have them. But what I want to say to them is, hey, you have a beautiful home. Why not, when you're on vacation, do you not explore hosting? Your house is Airbnb. Make money while you're gone and then use that money to get a place to stay that is not my house. Yeah, you might even come out on top. Yeah, you might make money. You might go on vacation and make money. We've got a trip. I don't know if we're going to take it or not, but we were just invited to go to this trip in Puerto Rico for uh, a friend of Mackenzie's 40th birthday. And I was like, well, I don't know. Like, where are they staying? She said, they've got an Airbnb and there's a room for us. And it's like, oh, well, that kind of makes it a no-brainer. And then on top of it to think like, oh, well, we could Airbnb our place out when we're away, and that's a total cleanup. If you're somebody who's put a lot of time and care into attention into your home, why not share it with people who are looking for a place to stay, and you will make some money when they do. And you might be thinking my space couldn't be an Airbnb, but that's not true. If you're concerned about the time commitment, you can even just Airbnb your place just a few weeks a year when you're traveling. Your home might be worth more than you think. Find out how much more at airbnb.com slash host. This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by Nissan. Ever wonder what's around that next corner? Or what happens if you push further? Seth, I know that's something you ask me every day. 
This is why we're excited to partner with Nissan. So much of this podcast is about families getting together in a car and taking adventures. The car becomes a home away from home. It becomes a wonderful, warm place. We love celebrating family adventures on this podcast called Family Trips. So take a Nissan Road, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. And do it in comfort and do it in style. I mean, with the new 2024 Nissan Rogue, the class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. There's no need to connect your phone as Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system of the 2024 Nissan Rogue. If mom and dad had this, I could call them and I would say, how far away are you from getting to our house? And they would still say, I don't know, maybe an hour? Well, that's if they answer the phone. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So thanks again to Nissan for sponsoring this episode of Family Trips. Now go find your next big adventure and enjoy the ride along the way. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Now, how did your parents feel about, first, I guess you moved to Chicago. Yeah. From Omaha. How did yeah. they feel about you taking that adventure and the could idea that you were going to give two shits? Really? They could give a shit. And I'm the youngest. They don't care. They already got four. Uh huh. <laughs> Does everyone else still live around Omaha? Or when you moved to Chicago, were they all close? No, man. Okay. My oldest sister had lived in, I believe she was living in Panama. Oh. When I was in Chicago. And then right before I moved to Amsterdam, my second oldest sister moved to Namibia. So me living in Amsterdam wasn't anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. But they wouldn't have cared, no way. Did your parents ever travel to Panama or Namibia or Amsterdam? Um, my mom did come to Amsterdam and it was the freaking best because I rented this house, this, you know, apartment for her on the Josh across the park from where we used to live right there. Okay. Um, and it was the nicest apartment that I could afford. And I thought it was nice. Then when we get there, the people had given us the mansion on the top of the building. We were wow. like, holy shit. So then it was like the the most beautiful apartment I've ever seen in my life. And uh, the doorbell sang a different song every time you pressed it. <laughs> <laughs> and we spent two hours pressing that doorbell. <laughs> Did it ever play Girls in the Back? <laughs> It played all American songs, oh, that's great. which is another thing we would do to pass the time. Like Not to pass the time. It was just a thing we were obsessed with is when we were young, my mom cut out an article that was like 42 songs every American should know. And we made it our business to learn all those songs. <laughs> So that the doorbell was singing like, oh, Danny boy, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. songs like that. It was like, there's no way any Dutch person knew any of these songs. Like, why, why, why is this what it is? So that's why we spent two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Playing doorbell? <laughs> Playing doorbell. It was great. What was the name of the, when Josh and I went oh. once with a bunch of SNL people to Amsterdam, what was the name of that? Pata Pata. Pata Pata. There was this weird, I feel like it was before Airbnb, where there were just independent rental companies that had crazy rental units that were basically built for people coming to Amsterdam who were going to party. Yeah. 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 And this was a themed, like, rental. And it was- What was was the theme? It was African themed. Yeah. (laughs) I bet knowing what we know about the Dutch, Amber, it probably was well over the line of what was acceptable for an African-themed apartment. I believe it. (laughs) Um, It was fabulous. I mean, it really served its purpose for giving us a good time. But the doorbell played this like, it was like, boom, 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 boom. And then there would be an elephant noise and some like monkey noises. Yeah. Seth and I slept on a square bed um, with a like sort of loose curtain around it. And then above the bed, 
there was a a shower that you would sort of shower up on this platform and then have to like come down these steps. I have seen that before. That's right. <laughs> if there was ever a room that you walked in and thought, there have been orgies here, <laughs> that was <laughs> a room. And it's a real drag to be sharing the orgy room with your bro. <laughs> I don't know if you were sharing it with your wife, if your wife would appreciate it either. I feel All like. I know is that, again, and also if you're on your square bed looking up at sort of a spiral staircase down from a shower. Yep. Like, if, you're, if your sibling was walking down, you kind of, after one mistake, you learn not to, like, glance up to see who was coming down. Because <laughs> that was a real. <laughs> Nothing is worse than see-through showers. Yeah, Why is yeah. that ever a thing? Yeah. Shame on every hotel. Shame on that Airbnb. It is nothing sacred. Can I get one minute to take a freaking shower? Did your mom love Amsterdam? It was a stop on a cruise with her and Aunt Bootsy. Aunt Bootsy, (laughs) once again, not my aunt. (laughs) So her and Aunt Bootsy came. And they really had a really good time. And they got to see me in a boom show. And that was cool. And then for some reason... I thought it would be a good idea to take one of those pedicabs home. Oh, uh, yeah. Man, these women, old as time, freaking jiggling around in the back of that mug. <laughs> that was the single dumbest thing I've ever done. They hated it. They hated it so bad. Uh, they kept me like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do picture a phone call where Lacey calls you to say, and the first thing she says, you put Aunt Bootsy in the back of a pedicab? Aunt Bootsy. <laughs> on cobblestone streets? <laughs> on brick streets? It wasn't smart. Yeah. I had a good time, but I'm prone to. Yeah. And did if your parents, um, have they made it to New York in the 10 years since you've lived in New York? No, they have not. My parents are now a little very old, and (laughs) they would rather never leave the house. (laughs) So, like, they'll go to, like, the store maybe. But since COVID, I think COVID really solidified these people are not leaving. Because now they know for a fact they never have to. Right. Yeah. You can almost get the doctor to come see you in your house. Mm -hmm. So they're in there. How much family do they have locally in Omaha now as far as kids and and nieces and nephews and I'm sorry, grandkids? They have the three original grandkids, which was an era. When those kids were born, we had a really good time. Um, They have the three originals. They have my brother and his two. They have my oldest sister. And that is it. Oh, and they're great grandkids so like two of my nieces and nephews have children so there's so they're my grand nieces grand nephews i don't know great great nieces great nephews i don't know grand i think grand the grand the grand the grand Mm, the maggie the maggie smith of nephews (laughs) i'm gonna keep trying to bring it back to this this big loop you did earlier your uncle Derek, probably not your uncle Cousin Derek is our cousin. Okay. (laughs) He is like, you know how sometimes people are, (laughs) well, I started now. You know how sometimes people are so wide and so muscular that they can't put their arms down? Mm -hmm. And also certain parts of them seem small. Like his hands seem small. There's no possible way they could be small. They're on the biggest man I've ever seen. It's just he's so wide and so muscular that it looks like he's got little hands. It's not a nice thing to say. But I imagine that has to be when you're, you know, four or five going to see the biggest man you've ever seen. That has to be a thing. We had a very big uncle, our uncle Kurt, big man. And I just remember like, crawling up and down him like a jungle gym yeah they know the score they know what they're there for yeah 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 oh that's fun and he was maryland are there any any specific memories you have of that stopover we went to go see Derek in a football game because he was in college at that point i might be mixing up my trips but i think i'm right might be wrong but we went to go see him in a um, football game. It was the only college football game I've ever seen. I think that's true. And we had a big 
cowbell for every time he made a touchdown? Why did we have a cowbell? I don't know, but I was straight ringing that mug. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's hard to give a kid a cowbell and tell them when they're supposed to ring it and when they're not. Yeah, for very specific purposes only. No, no, I'm ringing it. It's loud. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's fun. Do you remember where Derek played college? He played football at Flippy Flap University. (laughs) It's mm. funny, I know you as someone who knows not one thing about sports, and no. so it's always jarring to me where I realize you they, they did try to introduce you to it, and it just didn't take. No, thank you. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little bit of gymnastics, end of list. Okay. But you were good, and then you coached gymnastics? I was absolutely not good in any way, but okay. I did end up coaching it. And like cheerleading a lot. If I had started out with cheerleading, that I might be yes. a cheer coach. I was very mean. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you would recognize me. I wasn't having it. Do it. Do it now. Do it because I said to do it. You lazy little child. You could do it. Now just go give me 50 push-ups one time. Um, I wasn't a terror, okay? I was down to have fun. If you did your work, but one of these kids was like, when you're dealing with cheerleaders, they're like fucking 18 and they're mean and they're bad and their hormones are raging. They're wild. So you got to just, you have to run a tight ship. So one time, this was near the beginning of one of my cheerleading classes. One of the girls was like, you know, I'm just running them through the warm up. It's the same warm up we do every week. One of the girls goes, we have to do this, but you don't. This bitch just sits there. And I said, hey, everybody, go ahead and continue <laughs> the work up. So you come here. I said, I just sit there, huh? We're going to do push-ups till I get tired. And I never did because I'm very strong. <laughs> wow. I, I was like, hey, this going through the push-ups, this child is like, wheezing and sad because she was complaining because she was tired in the first place. It wasn't a nice thing to do. And I simultaneously don't regret it. I feel so, I have so much, uh, I don't know if empathy is the right word about this, but I watched that documentary Cheer on Netflix, you know, and you realize when the lights are on, cheer teams have nothing but enthusiasm and all the rest of the time they're moody and complaining and sore and teenagers. Yeah. Every time the coach turns their back, they're going to be snarky and shitty about them. And they're yeah. just so tired. And a lot of them have been dropped on the ground a bunch of times. <laughs> There's a lot of dropping kids, man. <laughs> the thud of a kid hitting those mats. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts so freaking bad. One time I was coaching gymnastics and I was coaching my little baby three-year-olds who were so perfect. Who I loved so bad. Um, I let them do whatever. You cute. But then that class was at the same time as the elite gymnasts. So we're on the beams. The elite gymnasts are on the floor. And one of them does a round off back handspring, you know, laid out double back. And she lands and puts her hands behind her, which is the first thing you learn in gymnastics. You don't fall like that. You fall like this. Um, You fall with your hands across your chest. And she puts her hands out behind her. And uh, the bone just oh. shot up through her elbow. And I snatched all these children. I was like, we're going in the pit. Yes. <laughs> oh, there are all these children in the pit. Oh. <laughs> As the, they like drag her off the thing. And the ambulance comes and they put her in the thing and get out. I mean, it was the grossest thing I've ever seen. It was, it was pretty great. Hey, we're going to take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. Family Trips is supported by Fidelity. It's that time again. Time to start thinking about your taxes. I know, not the most fun time of the year, but this year, when you think taxes, think about this tax smart move for 2023. Open and fund a Fidelity IRA before the tax deadline. Why? Well, you could reduce your taxable income in a traditional IRA, or you could get tax-free withdrawals in retirement with a Roth IRA. In either way, you are giving your money more time to grow. Plus, with a Fidelity IRA, there are no account fees or minimums to open. So when you think taxes, think about the tax-smart move of opening and funding a Fidelity IRA. 
You can get started today at fidelity.com slash IRA. And now for some legal stuff. Investing involves risk, including risk of loss. Fidelity does not provide tax advice. Consult a tax professional regarding your specific situation. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. Support for family trips comes from AG1. Hey, Pashi. Yes, Sufi. You know, I was feeling a little sluggish in the morning because, let's be honest, I'm getting run ragged. I got a full-time job. I got three children. Yeah. I needed to get a little kick in my step. How'd you do that? I did AG1, and I really enjoy it. Once I started drinking AG1, I just feel like I have more energy, and also, I just, like, I feel better getting so many vitamins in my body, and it's one scoop of AG1. And my little AG1 bottle, I drink that down. I love how it tastes. I feel like a lot of things that I've taken in the past, I don't love the taste. But AG1 is great. Yeah, fires me up. I also enjoy get some vitamin C, zinc. I'm really looking to improve my immune health. And also, this isn't just a guy on the street that gives you AG1. It's got a team of doctors and scientists, and that's why you can trust it. Yeah. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com backslash trips. That's drinkag1.com slash trips. Check it out. And Pashi, can I say something? Yeah. You look better. Oh, did I look bad? Let's just say AG1's made a a noticeable difference. (laughs) Well, cheers to them. What about these these later in life elective trips that were uh, just some of the kids? Always Amber. Yay. Where would you go for those? Were those also drive around, see family? That's right. Okay. It's always drive around, see family, and it's fun. Always in that van? Was the van sort of a constant? It was. It was in the van. But one time we took the three, the original three nieces and nephews to Disneyland or World. It had to be. It had to be Orlando, right? Um, and Aaron, who is now like the like an old man, Aaron famously said, like we had gone on the cat in the hat area. And then we're going through the um, gift shop and Aaron has been wanting a cat in the hat hat this entire time. (laughs) We're all waiting outside. I think Lacey's in there with Aaron and everyone's waiting for them. Aaron and Lacey come out holding hands and Aaron's bawling and Lacey goes, tell him what's wrong. And Aaron goes, this hat's too small for my Big old head. (laughs) 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 All of the time. This has just been so sad. It's honestly heartbroken. He'd been talking about it the whole time. But too fucking bad. You got a big ass head. I love that Lacey made him say it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. (laughs) They did say he could buy two and we could sew them together. (laughs) To make it. To make it more like a silo. It would be sort of silo with. <laughs> Poor baby. Yeah. We had a really good time with those two kids at Disney because they're scared of everything. So we went into the Terminator one, which is my favorite. You know, you just go in there, you sit in the theater and people like be hopping around. And then there's a big screen that's like explosions and then there's smoke. And sometimes it's like misting a little bit like one of those almost nothing happens to you so we get in there and sit down and big arnold schwarzenegger comes out and is like we got the goal everybody this is the mer-. the children start screaming they don't understand <laughs> that this is a ride because it's a movie screen but there's a man in front of the movie screen he's telling us we're in danger so they fucking lose it and I had to, just like I threw all the three-year-olds in the pit, I had to take a kid and take another kid. Dad took another kid. We had to get out of there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. We're freaking out. We're having a small freak out. Sorry about that. So when the three of us all lived in Amsterdam, there was an amusement park in Holland called Efteling that we went to a lot. And I will admit that sometimes we took drugs at the amusement park. <laughs> and... They were legal. They were legal. They were legal there at the time. 
Were you there the year Josh's girlfriend flipped out and and he had to like walk her back the opposite way down a line? Like a really long line that had sort of gone under tunnels at that point. Yeah. I think Amber froze. Hold on. We got we got a freezer. Mm-hmm. Freeze machine. All right. So Amber? Yeah. I'm just gonna say real quick for our listeners, if you sound different, it's because what happened? <laughs> the power went out. And then also <laughs> the internet went out. <laughs> and now I got to talk to you on my phone. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Josh, can we tell the story? I was teeing up before power went out. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not going to use names. But... No, you shouldn't yeah. use names. But much like Amber had nieces and nephews who got scared by a fake Arnold Schwarzenegger. You were with a girlfriend in sort of like one of those long lines to an amusement park ride where you kind of go underground and it just starts doubling back and it's getting darker and, and danker. Yeah. And the uh, the fear set in, the sort of the drug-induced fear set in. She was like, I have to uh, get out of here. And I was like, okay. And we left the line. And then she's like, no, I need to leave this whole place. And I said, okay. But we had taken a bus down with like, 40 people, 50 people who all worked for the theater. And I was like, "Can we? let's give it a minute. And she's like, no, I got to get out of here. So we left the park. I left all my friends. Mind you, I was also in sort of an altered state. (laughs) And I was like, I don't know where to go. This, This is an amusement park in the middle of Holland. I don't know anything that is around here. And our solution was going to be, let's go to the bus. And we're going to sit on the bus for four hours. And we walked outside and our bus was driving away because the guy was going to get lunch or something like that. And then we were just in a neighborhood. And the only thing I know that's near there is the Efteling Hotel. Um, So we walked down this little street past this little, you know, charming Dutch neighborhood. There were all these Dutch kids playing soccer on this field or whatever. And uh, I was like, see, this is nice. Like this is, and she was like, none of that's real. That's not real. This isn't real. And she put her purse on the ground and walked away from it. It had her, (laughs) it had her passport in it. And she's like, I don't need any of that. None of that's real. None of this is real. And I picked it up and I said, I need it. I need this. And she's like, okay. And then we went and we checked into the hotel and we laid down in a dark room and, uh, Four hours later, when everyone was leaving, I was sort of, you know, furiously texting with uh, with Seth and all my friends. And, you know, they're like, hey, we're going to the bus. And at that point, things had settled down. And I was like, can we join our friends on the bus? I don't know how to get back to Amsterdam from here if we don't go on the bus. And we uh, we got on the bus to great applause. <laughs> but boy, it was it was a bummer. It was a rough one. <laughs> And then we, everybody on the bus chanted, none of us are real. None of us. Are. I can't tell you how many times I have been the person to talk someone down from having taken too many drugs. It, it's always me. I love doing it. I'm great at it. But this last trip to Efteling, I took too many drugs and I went utterly insane. And me, my best friend, Lana, and our friend Tamara had to sit at uh, had lit the pard, the white horse, outside at a table. And I just ate as much food as I could physically eat while being like, this is nice. This is nice. Yeah, this is better. This is much better than going on rides. Yeah, this is nice. We went on one ride. In the middle of the ride, I was like, oh, great. I'm going to have the worst day of my life. Like, I said almost nothing. And we were there for four, six hours. How? The, the whole day. And every 20 minutes, I would look up and go, guys, I mean this. The two of you are the most beautiful human beings on planet Earth. <laughs> and I feel so bad for all of the people who aren't looking at you right now. <laughs> and then I would just go back to silence. And then 20 minutes later, I'd say the same thing. <laughs> I remember once we went to Jazz Fest in college in like a Winnebago. And we'd gone out in the morning and afternoon and watched music and day drank. And then we went back to the Winnebago and someone had pot brownies and they gave me two and they said, don't take them both now. And I said, got it. And I took them both right away. And then like (laughs) 
20 minutes later, everybody said, okay, we're going to go out to Bourbon Street. And I said, I'm actually not feeling great. I'm going to hang out here in a hot, literally a Winnebago parking lot on a hundred degree night. And they said, you can't stay here. And I'm like, no, I'm just a little tired. I'm gonna... And the guy goes, do you, did you eat both? I'm like, I did, I did both. <laughs> and he goes, what are you, <laughs> dummy? And I just like lied on my back in like a bunk above the driver's seat in Winnebago, just sweating <laughs> myself to death. Ugh. Rough, uh, that's rough stuff. Horrible. Yeah. Pashi? Yeah? We have some questions for Amber. Do you want to fire away? All right, Amber, here's, here's some questions. Oh. Some traveling questions. You can only pick one. Is your ideal vacation relaxing, adventurous, or educational? Hmm. I guess it's certainly not adventurous. It has to be <laughs> relaxing because I hate learning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is your favorite means of transportation? Train, plane, automobile, boat, bike, your own two feet, something else? My own two feet. I love to go for a little walk. I walk anywhere. I like walking too. You see so much more when you walk. Even in Amsterdam, we're so used to riding bikes around that city. But if you walk, you just get a totally different perspective. You see so much more. It's, uh, it's nice. I like it. In what other place would you do this? Like you would prefer to be on a plane? Who wants to be on a plane? Some people. Did anyone say yes to plane? I mean, some people. I feel like some yeah. people that probably have status like planes. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Like they get to board first and they get like wings. the specialty cocktail. I'm actually flying later today and I'm not going to be super psyched about it, but say la vie. You should walk. You should <laughs> walk. You'll see so you much. Should. Oh my God. You can't believe everything I saw. It took me a year. All right. If you could take a family vacation with any family, alive or dead, real or fictional, other than your own family, what family would you like to take a family vacation with? Thank you for asking. I guess I really enjoy. I mean, you 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 would have said the Cosby show. That's what you would have said <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to go with the Cosby family before any of the trouble. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a fine. I mean, look, yeah, the Cosby family before I knew of the trouble. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> there was always trouble, baby. <laughs> that's part of the problem. Um, okay, before you knew anything, that's great. If you had to be stranded on a desert island with one member of your family, who would it be? So it can't be Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you'd be so sad if you got stranded on a desert <laughs> island with Bill Cosby because you'd either have to watch him die or take care of him right. so there you'd be taking care of someone you hate and you, the way you that. get him is because he can't see well you'd every day you'd be like oh it's a boat <laughs> so it's Lace Face Lace Face no close second right Lace Face no close second Lacey's my favorite guy and Omaha, is it Omaha proper is your hometown? That's right. Would you recommend Omaha as a vacation destination? Don't go there. there we <laughs> have nothing for you. Don't go to Omaha unless it is to go to bars with me. You don't need it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing, you are now talking like the Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> don't go to Omaha. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Omaha does have, and this is real, and I brag on it 100% of the time, the world's best zoo. Mm. Technically, we're third in the world, but I think we're the first best. I didn't know what zoos were like. So when I went to like Chicago and shit, I was like, what kind of animal jail is this? Right. Because our zoo is luscious, man. Because you got space. Yes. And Omaha has the most millionaires per capita. So they mm. love to give an animal a dollar. So ah. I think that's why our zoo is so special. There is no zoo anywhere close. It's so good. Okay. I also just read an article that said one of the top five sushi restaurants in America is in Omaha. <laughs> and I mean it. I mean it. Like there's this, there's this crazy great sushi chef who's from there. And uh, yeah. So Google it. Google it. But apparently what? it's. Very hard to get, uh, get a seating. There's like 12 seats a night. What? Could you, Josh, will yeah. you do your impression of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger calling the Omaha Sushi Restaurant and trying to get a table? I like, I like the table for two tonight if you have it. 
<laughs> Two people like, do you really have good sushi in Omaha? Is that possible? It's great. Josh, that's very bad. <laughs> that was great. The Lucidor is great. <laughs> uh, I want to eat no, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't keep doing it. No. But it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. All right. And then Sue has our final questions. Amber Ruffin, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No. Yuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know Grand Canyon? Big old hole. No. For what? All right. Well, do you want to you know, ask the second part of your question, Sue? I feel like I have my answer. The second part, just <laughs> FYI, is would you ever want to go? No. I feel like I made myself clear and asking the second question was unnecessary. <laughs> no, I'm never going. Okay. What a horrible idea. Also, people fall into that thing. No, we know. No kidding. Although, you know what? Very bottom of the Grand Canyon, there's an incredible zoo. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> there's a place called Zoo and Sushi at the very bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we love you, Amber. Love you, Amber. I love you, Josh. I love you, Seth. Bye-bye. Amber and her family took a tour around the whole country to visit family. But they weren't all family-like when they went to Ohio to see her Aunt Rose, who was not her aunt, but just her mom's good friend. Yeah, they were driving. Amber was the youngest of the five and she would sit up front and pinch her daddy cause the baby gets to be a baddie that's the way it goes in El Paso Amber and Jimmy were in the bathtub Jimmy sneezed and it was a disaster snot was everywhere, it was master daddy scooped her out ew, 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 ew ew, 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 ew. 